Hi everybody, thanks for taking the time to look at this presentation. This is on the ELGO 8201 intercom door phone. As you can see from the pictures here, it is basically a stainless steel plate, plastic mounting, single button, speaker and microphone. The 8201 is a PoE powered wideband intercom door phone. Runs uh, can use G711, G722 um, codex. It is used for door entry applications in offices, classrooms, um, internal office communications, warehousing, any anywhere where you just need a a simple voice over IP intercom phone, which can actually control door locks. This is the um, unit you'd use, and it is outdoor rated. The E201 is PoE powered. If you don't have PoE um, capability on your switches, you will need a PoE injector. It's a very compact little unit. Um, you'll see the dimensions later on. It's two-way speech communication. It can actually um, be incorporated into the multicasting paging as well. If you've got an algo paging uh, solution, uh, you can actually set up the um, 8201 to be part of that paging solution. We'll go through that in a little bit of uh, detail later on. It has um, door opening control uh, on board by um, a relay so that the unit is, is a truly all-in-one unit. You can do the two-way intercom and then if the phone who answers you dials a um, security code, which by default on the system is six, it will actually open up the, um, will fire the relay, which is the dry contact relay, which will open up the door phone mechanism. The device registers as a third-party endpoint, SIP endpoint, to hosted or on-premise UC and the UC Unified Communications Environment. Effectively, what that means is that it's a SIP compliant um, unit. It will connect to pretty much any other SIP compliant server, IP PBX, cloud-based system, etc. It's all NAT compatible, so it can work behind the NAT. And so it doesn't matter if you've got a cloud, if you've got a local um, IP PBX or a, a dedicated building um, uh, SIP server, as long as it is SIP compliant, it's not encrypted or anything like that, or it's or not proprietary, the ELGO 8201 will work on it without any issues. The 8201 can be set up in a number of ways, and we'll go through a little bit more in detail of it, but essentially it actually can work as a standalone unit. It can actually have its uh, own onboard relay control and even sensor to detect if the door is opened or closed. But it can also integrate with the 8061, um, ELGO 8061 um, controller unit. Um, and the purpose for that would be that if you wanted a more secure environment so that you've got the 82 01 intercom unit by the door, but then to unlock the door, you want a separate um, controller unit for or the, for the relay. So um, if anyone breaks into the actual intercom phone themselves, they can't actually try and work out how to wire it and short it all up. Um, some building environments demand this, others not so much. So it's, it's got the flexibility of setting it up uh, any way you wish to do it. The other neat thing about this is um, it's very simple for a technician to install. Once it's um, actually plugged in to the uh, network, or if it's not registered, e.g. the process is you literally plug it in, it fires up, powers up. After about 30 seconds, it'll give an audible beep, and that's indicating I'm ready, I'm working. And if you press the call button, if it's not registered, e.g. you haven't set up an auto deployment or anything like that on it, um, auto provisioning, if it's not registered and you press that button, it's going to tell you what the IP address number is that it's sitting on. So there's no mucking around trying to find the IP address. It literally talks to you and tells you the IP address in the form of the IP address of this device is 192.168.1.115. And it keeps repeating that until you press the button to stop. Then you can simply go to the browser, browse in, and basically uh, do any programming you wish. If we have a look at the, um, the rear of the unit, just wanted to point out a couple of things here for you. 
this here, that's where the PoE um, network cable goes into. So that's your network connection just sitting in there. Over here is your door control. It's your relay that controls the external lock mechanisms. So it's just dry contact. So you've got a normally open, normally closed. You've got, and it's got a door sensor there. So you could use that for indicating if the door is opened and or closed. Dimensions of the unit. As I said, very compact. Basically, the outer, the outer dimensions of the unit is 115 millimeter square. Okay, this is aluminium. This is a plastic. There's your microphone sitting in there. The depth of it is 32, oh sorry, 34 millimeters um, of the insert that's going into the wall. If it's going into the wall, because this can actually be surface mounted and or flush mounted, and the um, then so it's, the depth is very um, well 34 millimeters. So it's a it's a low footprint, low low cavity footprint. Okay, and then it's just got the internal dimensions of the actual insert that's going into the into the wall. Here's two examples of how you can mount it. Now, pretty much everything um, comes uh, all in one here. So this is your surface mount. You've got your surface mount uh, gasket here. Put that against the wall. That stops any moisture and water getting in there. If you are going to mount it against a wall, just make sure you're not having a wall that's got running water down it. Um, for example. If you've got like a brick, a brickwork in there and you've got like mortar cracks all going through here, the seal is not going to seal it. So you need to make sure that you don't want uh, water um, running down against here. So just, just try to bear that in mind wherever you're putting it. You've got your surface mount bracket. You then have got your main assembly housing and the faceplate and literally cable plugs in. If you've, if you've got uh, a door control, you've got two wires for the door control relays on it and that's it done. For the flush mount, you basically need um, your flush mount brackets. So that is additional. Contact us for them. You've got your main housing assembly and again the face plant, a plate and it just mounts in flush. Quite simple to install. Um, most commonly done would be simply using its um, surface mount bracket. Specifications. It's um, 0.4 of a kg. Audio codecs the G711A. G7U and G722. It's got servicer redundancy for primary secondary. If your main um, voice server fails, uh, the um, ELGO 8201 will roll through to a secondary. It's a Linux based operating system. It's got the details there of the processes. Relay output normally opened or normally closed. Maximum rating 30 volts, 50 milliamp. Really output, normally open or close what we talked about. You program it via the web interface, HTTP, etc. blah, blah, blah. And it can also be set up via um, DHCP to get off to a um, auto provisioning server. So that you can actually pre-configure these if you've got a lot of them going into a site and they will auto provision um, with all the programming and SIP registration. And the three types of provisioning there, have a nosy through that. Um, NAT's done, etc. <clears throat> Runs by, um, so the unit will run quite happily behind a, um, the NAT, so to, you can use it on the cloud environment. It gives you environmental um, specifications, pretty much straightforward, um, not too hot, not too cold type scenario. Um, negative 40, um, positive 40 degrees from our perspective. And of course, um, humidity up to 95% non condensing. Okay. Pretty standard for most of the things, and we've got our compliance um, specs, etc. If we want to have a look at how we would set it up, just as a the simplest, simplest way to do it, <clears throat> just to use it as a as, as a door phone and nothing else, doesn't have to open up doors, or just as an intercom for someone to call and let them in, but you know, but with no lock control, you would simply plug it into your network via a PoE cable, that heads off to the server, you program it. And you could tell it to ring an extension or extensions in your building, uh, depending on, on the um, depending on the IP, IPVX that you're dealing. Or <clears throat> it can be simply um, the same setup for a cloud environment. So there is there's no special requirements for the um, 8201 to work on a cloud and or a local um, SIP server. It simply just simply works. 
Only additional thing I, I could put to this diagram if I would be if I wanted to have the door control options on it, I could um, have two wires coming out of the um, 8201 going to the door control side of things to well, the tri dry contact relays just to trigger the door open. Or I can go for a little bit more complicated. Now, <clears throat> the previous example where we were talking about the door and using the onboard relay to control is probably great for the majority of the installations that are going in there. Um, but some um, installations require a more secure control of the, the locking mechanism. Now, what we mean by that is that what they're worried about is that if I get a crowbar and attack this thing, tear open the um, unit and try and short the wiring for the relays, I could, in theory, open the door. By using the um, 8061 controller, which is this unit here, which is another ELGO unit, standard off the shelf, we can have the 8201 trigger an unlock, unlock code, and it will go to the 8061, which will then fire a relay which is on board it unit it's itself. Now, the purpose for that is so if we look over here on the right, We've got our 8201 here directly connected to the network. It's not connected in any way to the lock mechanism. This is all the independent lock mechanism here. Here's your 8061, which is also an IP device. So it's connected, connected to your network. And what that does is we call the person. They say, yeah, yeah, no problems. Open up the door. But it doesn't open up anything on the phone. It basically triggers the relay and the 8061. And that's how the door opens. Quite smart. Okay, so that's that's uh, all there is for the um, sales side of things. There is a uh, sales and technical combined. Uh, the technical combined one uh, goes into the um, web browser. If you'd like to have a look at that, feel free to have a look at the um, the combination um, presentation. We've got this kind of combination, and we carry on going into the the browser side. Apart from that, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.